When we think of serial killers, spree killers and other dangerous individuals, most of us overlook children. Yet the people on today's list committed vile, heinous and shocking crimes while they were still young children. And many may never be released. Today we look at the top 50 most dangerous kids in the world. Don't forget to throw a comment down below if you think I've missed anybody important. Throw a like on the video to support the ongoing series and help it rise in the YouTube algorithm. And subscribe with the bell icon as I have another seven of these videos coming until the end of the year. I hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching. Number 50, Morgan Leppert. Smiling as she was sentenced to life without parole for the brutal slaying of James Stewart in his own home, Morgan Leppert was just 15 years old when she committed her heinous crimes. Committing the crimes alongside 22-year-old boyfriend Toby, Leppert was seen in fits of giggles during the police interview tapes as she told them how her boyfriend had ordered her to attack Stewart. Now threatening suicide while in prison, Leppert only avoided the death penalty thanks to her testimony against her co-accused. One member of the jury who convicted the pair described her as a fully complicit evil and a conniver, with her most recent appeal denied. Leppert's last known prison location was Lowell Correctional Institution in Ocala. Number 49, Aaron Campbell. Born in Shrewsbury, Shropshire on the 7th of May 2002, Aaron Campbell had an upbringing that included elements of physical and emotional abuse, thanks to his mother's persistent problems with alcohol. He had a history of self-harming and depression, was tested for ADHD, but was popular at school and in the computer gaming scene. Entering into a rehabilitation program when he was caught starting fires at the age of 15, he described how he may one day kill for the lifetime experience. He was convicted of killing Alicia McPhail, whom he had abducted after breaking into her home to steal cannabis. He attempted to cover up the crimes by throwing his clothes into the sea. However, CCTV footage caught him leaving and returning home several times during the murder timeline. Other footage caught him walking along the beach carrying the girl and both DNA evidence and a Snapchat video he recorded claiming to be the killer saw him convicted of the crime. He later admitted his guilt, claiming that it took everything to not laugh during the trial and said he was quite satisfied with the killing. Initially imprisoned at HM Young Offenders Institution, Polmont, it's thought he was moved to an adult prison when he was just 21. Number 48, Dylan Roof. One of the most dangerous convicted mass murders in South Carolina, Dylan Roof was convicted of the child Charleston Church Massacre in 2015. Roof was part of a neo-Nazi white supremacist group who had convinced him he could start a race war with the killings. Widely described as a domestic terrorist, Roof managed to slay nine people, all African Americans, including the senior pastor. One of the largest manhunts in South Carolina history ensued, with Roof finally arrested with a Glock 41.45 caliber handgun still in the car, thanks mainly in part to traffic. CCTV. He was convicted of all charges, receiving nine consecutive life sentences at the state level and a death sentence at the federal level. Currently imprisoned at USP Terre Haute, he resides in the very same place. He will eventually meet his end. Number 47, Pierre Folio. In a crime that gripped France, Pierre Folio was convicted of slaying his family with his father's hunting rifle while the film Shrek played in the background. At just 14 years old, Folio is one of France's youngest ever killers and was convicted of slaying his mother, father, four-year-old brother and seriously injuring his 12-year-old sister who later raised the alarm. After the slayings, he jumped on a bicycle and rode for 10 miles, stopping to make a phone call to police. He coldly confessed to the murders and gave police a detailed description of his actions, having planned the attack for several days. He was described as a model child by neighbours and to this day is not it is not clear why he attacked his family. Number 46 Todd Cameron Smith. Entering the W.R. Myers High School with an armed .22 caliber semi-automatic rifle on April 28, 1999, Cameron Smith had only one thing on his mind, murder. The 14-year-old school dropout armed with 375 rounds of ammunition walked into his high school corridor and immediately began shooting at students. After being wrestled to the ground by the school's gym coach, he was arrested without further incident, having fatally shot only one 
one student and injuring one other. Initially charged with one count of murder and two of attempted murder, Smith was tried as a juvenile, even though prosecutors had pushed for an adult trial. He received just three years after pleading guilty to the charges and was placed on probation for seven years after release. He fled his halfway house in 2005 and was rearrested later that day after turning himself in. Number 45, Ricky Casso. Known by his nickname the Acid King, Casso attacked and killed his 17-year-old friend Gary Lowers in 1984. Described as being high on LSD, Casso committed the killing while in the presence of two other teenagers. The killing became sensational news across New York, thanks mainly in part to parts of the murder being reported to feature the occult. Casso bragged about the murder to several people afterwards and claimed that he was told by the devil to attack Lowers. After his arrest, Casso committed suicide in his jail cell without ever going to trial. Number 44, Barry Lukitis. Dressed as a Wild West gunslinger and wearing a black duster, Barry Lukitis walked from his house to his school armed with a multitude of guns and ammunition. 14-year-old Lukitis entered his school and proceeded to his algebra classroom where he shot and killed two students and fatally shot his teacher. Thought to be suffering from mental illness and a dysfunctional family background, he was thought to be suffering from depression and bipolar disorders at the time of the shootings. He was convicted of two counts of first-degree murder, one count of second-degree murder, murder, attempted murder and 16 counts of aggravated kidnapping. Now serving a life sentence plus 189 additional years, he is currently imprisoned at Callum Bay Correction Center in Washington State. Number 43, Lionel Tate. Currently the youngest citizen ever sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole, Lionel Alexander Tate is responsible for the first degree murder of six-year-old Tiffany Eunuch. Tate, whose original conviction was overturned in 2004, had been wrestling with Eunuch and said the death had been an accident. While he was freed for the overturned conviction, his life of crime did not end there and he was further convicted of armed robbery, battery and violation of probation after robbing a pizza delivery man at gunpoint. Currently serving 30 years for probation violation and 10 years for robbery, he is currently incarcerated at Charlotte Correctional Facility in Florida. Number 42, Dylan Klebold. Known as one half of the Columbine school massacre duo, Klebold was born in Wichita, Kansas in 1981. Often wearing trench coats that often rebelled against authority in school, they began planning the attack in May 1998. They carried out the attacks just weeks before they were due to graduate and after the massacre was over, 13 people had been killed and 24 were injured. Klebold, along with his accomplice, committed suicide rather than be taken alive and it's thought many of the school shootings ever since have been copies of the original attack. Number 41, Eric Harris. The accomplice of Dylan Klebold in the Columbine school massacre, Eric Harris is thought to have been the ringleader of the two killers, acquiring weapons and making explosives for the attack. Both Harris and Klebold worked together at the Black Jack Pizza, with Harris being promoted to shift leader over Klebold. He often bragged about his ability to deceive others and was quick to get angry, often threatening those who enjoyed him with explosive threats. Fascinated by war, he often wrote about about attacking people he did not like and was prone to sudden outbursts of anger. He and Klebold left a number of tapes and recordings about the attack, much of which has never been released to the public. Number 40, Elisa Bustamente. Considered to be one of the most dangerous teenagers in Missouri, she was responsible for the death of Elizabeth Alton in October 2009 in what prosecutors described as a thrill killing. Bustamante attacked nine-year-old Alton with a completely random attack and went to great lengths to avoid capture, later writing that she had no remorse for the slaying. She later apologised for the murder, but it was revealed in court that she attended church straight after the attack. She was sentenced to life with the possibility of parole, however it is unclear due to the nature of the murder whether she will ever be released. Number 39, Jamie Ruse. Another teenager convicted of a high school shooting, this time in Linville, Tennessee, a small town located in Giles County. Hiding his .22 caliber Remington Viper semi-automatic rifle behind some bushes, Rouse went to pick up his friend Stephen Abbott. Abbott took control of the vehicle before heading to the school, where he and Rouse commenced their killing spree. Pear killed three before being wrestled to the ground and arrested, and later sentenced to life in prison.
prison without parole. Number 38, Brenda Ann Spencer. Growing up in the San Carlos neighborhood of San Diego, California, Spencer lived across the road from the very school he would one day come to attack. She often exposed a negative attitude towards police and authority in general and was often in trouble at school. During Christmas of 1978, she received a Ruger 1022 semi-automatic .22 caliber rifle with a telescopic sight and 500 rounds of ammunition, having a for a radio. On the morning of January 28th, 1979, she began shooting at the school gates, injuring eight children, killing two first responders, and injuring one police officer. She barricaded herself inside her house for a further seven hours, even telling one journalist on the phone that she hated Mondays and was found to have consumed copious amounts of whiskey and beer during the shooting. She eventually surrendered, was tried as an adult, and pled guilty to two counts of murder and assault with a deadly weapon. Sentenced to 25 years to life imprisonment, she has been treated for both depression and epilepsy at the California Institute for Women in Chino. She became eligible for hearings to consider her suitability for parole in 1993, but so far has been unsuccessful. Number 37, Craig Price. Committing his crimes in Warwick, Rhode Island, between the ages of 13 and 15, Craig Price was arrested in 1989 for four murders committed in in his neighbourhood. Not only did he have an existing criminal record for petty theft, his four murders initially went undiscovered until he admitted them when caught. Crimes of price eventually led to a change in state law to allow juveniles to be tried as adults for serious crimes. He was also hit with additional charges, including criminal contempt for refusing a psychological evaluation, extortion for threatening a correctional officer, assault, and violation of probation for fights while in prison. Craig Price is currently the youngest serial killer in US history. Number 36, Laurie Tackett. Growing up in Madison, Indiana on October the 5th, 1974, Tackett's mother was a fundamentalist Pentecostal Christian with whom she often clashed with. She became increasingly rebellious after her 15th birthday and became fascinated with the occult, often trying to impress her friends by pretending to be possessed. By 1991, she had begun to self-harm and began dating someone who did the same. Dropping out of high school in September 1991, she was later accused of attacking and killing Shanda Reen Scherer, a 12-year-old girl in events that are far too disturbing to be published here. The incident attracted nationwide attention in the United States and Tackett was sentenced to 60 years in prison for the particularly gruesome killing. Number 35, Melinda Loveless. Sentenced to 60 years in prison at just 12 years old, Loveless was found to have attacked and killed 12-year-old Shanda Scherer, along with three other people. All pleaded guilty to the murder in court, and it was revealed that Loveless was suffering from depression, intense jealousy, and often got into fights at school. The crimes committed against the victim apparently lasted hours, and it is reported that Loveless showed no emotion for the killing after being caught. Out of all four killers, Loveless served the most time in prison for her part in the killing, and was released on parole in 2019, having served served 26 years. Number 34, Peter Woodcock. Known today as Canada's youngest serial killer, Woodcock was born in Peterborough, Ontario in 1939 and was often terrified of unknown people as a child. Often the target for bullies due to his size, he was eventually sent to a school for emotionally disturbed children. At the age of 16, he began his horrific attacks on children, most half of his age, luring them with the promise of a ride on his bicycle, a prized possession. Found not guilty of the murders by reason of insanity, he was sent to a maximum security health center where he began to manipulate fellow inmates. After becoming friends with Bruce Hamill, a security guard and former patient at a lower security facility, he convinced Hamill to release him and attack Dennis Kerr and another former inmate. He was sent back to the maximum security mental health facility and died of natural causes in 2010 while still incarcerated. It is thought he attacked over a hundred children from different parts of his city before being caught. Number 33, Kenneth Rondlich. Sentenced to 40 years in prison for killing his four-year-old sister, teen killer Kenneth Rondlich told police he committed the crime so she would not be abused even though these allegations were never proven. Rondlich called 
police straight after the attack and confessed, later pleading guilty to first-degree murder in court. Suffering from a personality disorder, Rondlich is currently serving this sentence at the Illinois Department of Corrections and he is not scheduled for release until at least 2052. Number 32, Girl A. Known as the Sasebo Slashing or the Nevada Tan Murder, it took place in Okubo Elementary School in Japan. The killing of Satomi Mitiari by an 11-year-old female classmate only referred to as Girl A is a practice common in Japan for female criminals. After confessing her crimes to police and saying the motive was internet slander, she was reportedly institutionalized by a Japanese female court. The slaying provoked massive debate in Japan as to what age young people should be criminally responsible. Number 31, Anissa Weira. In a case that gained worldwide attention, the Slender Man killing was one of the most heavily covered murders online. 12-year-old girl Anissa Weira and an accomplice lured their friend Peyton Lautner into a forest and attacked her. Remarkably, Lautner survived the attack and managed to crawl to a road where she was rescued by a passing car and recovered in hospital six days later. Weira was picked up at a furniture store four miles from the attempted murder site and said the attack was to appease the fictional character Slender Man. She was found not guilty by mental disease or defect and committed to mental health institutions for sentences of 25 years to life and will be under communal supervision until at least the age of 37. She is also barred from using any social media and will have her internet use monitored. Number 30, Morgan Geyser. An accomplice of Anissa Weira, the accomplice of Anissa Weira in the brutal attempted murder of Peyton Lautner in the forest for the fictional Slender Man character, Geyser was considered to be one of the more dangerous of the two and often experienced hallucinations such as ghosts, colours melting down walls and imaginary friends. She was often seen talking to herself after the arrest and showed no empathy towards the victim and was the ringleader in the attack. She was diagnosed with early onset childhood schizophrenia and was sentenced to 40 years to life in mental health institutions. Number 29, Edmund Kemper. Born Edmund Emil Kemper III, he is one of California's most dangerous serial killers who even managed to kill his own mother. Having a problematic upbringing, Kemper often argued with family members and had recently had a gun confiscated from him on the day of the first murder. That day, after a fierce argument with his grandma, Kemper stormed into the house, retrieved his rifle and fatally shot his his grandma, who he thought was about to shoot birds in the garden. Shortly after this attack, his grandpa returned from shopping and he too was gunned down in the driveway. Kemper was arrested after phoning the local police and confessing to the crimes, saying he just wanted to see what it was like to kill his grandparents. He was just 15 years old at the time. He was sent to a maximum security hospital and underwent several tests, but later managed to use them to his advantage and tricks psychiatrists into believing he had been cured. Released from detention against the recommendation of psychiatrists on the 8th December 18th, 1969, Kemper was far from cured and after a brief non-violent stint began killing again. He managed to murder another eight people, all women on and off between 1972 and 1973, and this included his own mother, whom he killed while she slept. Indicted on eight counts of first-degree murder, he was diagnosed with antisocial, narcissistic and schizotypal personality disorders. Number 28, Harvey Robinson. Currently the youngest contemporary serial killer to be sent to death row in America, Robinson is also the first serial killer in history of Allentown, Pennsylvania. Caught shoplifting from the age of nine, he was finally sent to a residential reform program after being convicted of assault in 1989. Over a period of two to three years, Robinson later killed three women in or near Allentown and was suspected of taking part in three more murders. After attempting another attack, he was caught by a police officer and an exchange of gunfire took place with Robinson being injured. He was tracked to a local hospital and arrested, later being found guilty at trial. Robinson is currently incarcerated in the state prison in Greater Fort, Montgomery County. 
Number 27, Joshua Phillips. Having agreed to play baseball with his eight-year-old neighbour, Maddie Clifton, who lived across the street, 14-year-old Phillips was not allowed to have friends over while his parents were not home. While playing, he accidentally hit the baseball directly at Clifton, who began screaming, later pulling her into his house and attacking her. After hiding the body, Phillips took part in the community search for the missing girl, who was later found by Phillips' mother while tidying his room. Arrested at school, he confessed to the murder hours later and was tried as an adult, receiving a sentence of life without parole, one that was later scrutinised even by prosecutors as being too harsh. After several appeals, the sentence was upheld, but he was allocated for resentencing sometime in 2023. Number 26, Jesse Pomeroy. Raised by his mother in South Boston, not much is known about the life of Pomeroy before he was 11 years old. He was first caught attacking seven boys of his age in 1871 and after being caught was sent to a reform school where he served less than a year. After release he became homicidal and went on to kill two children, later being nicknamed the Boy Fiend and was said to be the most vicious teenager ever recorded at the time. Convicted of the attacks at 13 and the murders at 14, Pomeroy was initially sentenced to death before this was commuted to life in solitary and then life without parole. Pomeroy was so dangerous that he spent 41 years in solitary confinement anyway and died in prison in 1932. Number 25, Willie Boskett Jr. Having a traumatic childhood, Boskett's father was convicted of killing two people shortly after he was born and sentenced to life in prison. He was sent to stay with his grandfather who attacked him on numerous occasions. In and out of detention centres and reformatories for most of his life, Boskett, then 15, years old, shot and killed Noel Perez on a train operating on the New York City subway. Eight days later, Boskett and another accomplice shot dead another man in another attempted robbery and committed two further armed robberies the same night. He pleaded guilty to both murders and was sentenced to a maximum of five years in the Goshen Youth Facility, a sentence prosecutors tried to get extended but failed. After escaping this facility, he was re-arrested and tried as an adult, receiving another four years in prison then another seven years for assaulting court officers. Currently serving 82 years to life, Boskett was kept in a plexiglass cell in complete solitary confinement, later declaring war on the New York prison system. He was moved to Five Points Maximum Security Prison and is still in solitary confinement with a projected release date of 2062, when he will be 99 years old. Number 24, Jasmine Richardson. Having been grounded for dating her then boyfriend Jeremy Steinke, the 12 year old's parents disliked the 11 year age difference. Steinke described himself as a 300 year old vampire, and both himself and Richardson had accounts on several vampire websites. Richardson convinced Steinke to help kill both her parents and her younger brother, later receiving a 10 year sentence after trial due to her age. Steinke received three life sentences for the murders and was sentenced to a minimum of 25 years in federal prison. Richardson was released from a 10-year sentence at a psychiatric hospital in the fall of 2011 and by 2016 had her court-ordered conditions, restrictions and supervision removed. She is believed to be the youngest person ever convicted of a multiple murder in Canada. Number 23, Eric Smith. Convicted of killing four-year-old Derek Joseph Robbie, when he was just 13 years old, Eric Smith was convicted of a second-degree murder in 1994. Officially being released in February 2022 after being granted parole in 2021, Smith's jail term lasted over 27 years, far more than the nine years he was sentenced to at the time of the killing. He was denied parole over 10 times and was held in various prisons around the USA, including Collins Correctional Facility, and Clinton Correctional Facility in New York. Number 22, John Venables. Heading over to the UK now on the first half of a terrible twosome who committed a heinous murder against a young James Bulger, John Venables abducted the two-year-old after his mother took her eyes off him for just a second. It was dubbed the crime of the decade when he and his co-accused, whom you will hear about next, were brought before an adult trial in 1993. Found guilty that same 
same year, Venables became the youngest person in British history to be convicted of murder. So bad was the crime at the time, his parents had to be moved to different parts of the country and assign new identities thanks to death threats from vigilantes. Having planned the attack after a series of shoplifting incidents, Venables was found to be capable of mischievous discretion, meaning he was old enough to understand the crime he was committing. Detained at Her Majesty's pleasure, he was released in June 2001 and then returned to prison in 2010 for breaching his lifelong license conditions. He left again on parole in 2013, but it was not long before he was back behind bars for a second breach of his license in 2017, but has been given several new identities since. Number 21, Robert Thompson. Partner in crime to John Venables in the murder of James Bulger, Thompson had no record of violence before the murder. Described as both street smart and clever, police officers who questioned the 10-year-old said he tried very, very hard to con them. Thompson was described as the ringleader of the pair in court and used his emotions to avoid questioning on several occasions. Thompson was held at the Barton Moss Secure Care Centre in Manchester after trial and was released after serving eight years. There has currently been no incidents of Thompson reoffending so far. Number 20, Mason Sisk. Accused of killing five members of his own family in September 2019 when he was just 14 years old, he committed the murders while they slept. Sisk had first attempted to poison his stepmother by putting peanut butter in her coffee while knowing she was allergic. After this failed, he resorted to shooting all five members of his family, including two half-brothers, six-month-old Coulson and six-year-old Grayson and his half-sister Aurora, aged five. Seven days of which witness testimony followed during his trial and he was found guilty of four counts of capital murder in April 2023. Expected to be sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, he escaped the death penalty mainly due to his age at the time of the crimes. Number 19, Quindaris Burress. After shooting a man apparently at random, the motive for this murder it turns out was robbery. Burress was charged with capital murder and was tried under Mississippi law as an adult. He even though he was a minor at the time of the killing. Baldwin businessman Henry Adams Jr., 70, was robbed inside his South 2nd Street home in late October 2017 and his body was not found until the next day. Pleading guilty to second-degree murder, Burress was sentenced to 25 years for the slaying and told he must serve 20 years minimum in state prison. Number 18. Eric Burrell. Quiet and shy, 16-year-old Eric Burrell was studying electromechanics in school and was described by his teachers as a model student. Burrell, of course, had a dark side and part of this came from his idol, none other than Adolf Hitler himself. Eric began his murderous killing spree by shooting his stepfather and stepbrother in the family home, later shooting his mother as she returned home from church. After filling a rucksack with food, a raincoat, a map, some cash and a gun that fires only rubber bullets while taking the murder weapon with him and a ton of ammunition, he embarked on what has been described as a one-man pastoral blitzkrieg through France, shooting and killing 12 other people and injuring four others. After police arrived, Burrell shot himself, ending one of the deadliest single-person killing sprees in French history. Number 17, William Schultz. Accused of brutally stabbing to death a nine-year-old boy two years ago while he slept in his own bed, the question the question of whether Schultz committed the crime was never in dispute. Found guilty of first-degree murder by a Contra Costa County Superior Court jury, Schultz was also convicted on a felony burglary charge. Schultz was mentally ill at the time of the killing, having been diagnosed as bipolar and with delusional belief that an apocalyptic world war was imminent. Sentenced to 30 years to life, Schultz was sent to state prison instead of a mental health facility, meaning he won't be free until at least 2047. Number 16, Jarrell Milton. Arrested almost 400 miles away from his crime, Jarrell Milton was on the run for several days before being captured. Milton was wanted in connection with the fatal shooting of Jamiel Ray in Nebraska after he had arranged to meet him in a car park to sell marijuana. He was put on indefinite probation for his role in the killing which took place alongside two other boys and was recently re-arrested for rape. In and out of boy
boys' town and group homes repeatedly running away, Milton was sent to the Kearney YRTC programme to complete his probation. Continuing to commit crimes while on probation and on electronic GPS monitoring, he is now in jail somewhere in North Dakota and faces years in prison as an adult. Number 15, Christian Hernandez. Currently the youngest person charged as an adult with first degree murder in Jacksonville history, Hernandez pleaded guilty to manslaughter and aggravated battery. The victim was his two-year-old half-brother and he was sentenced to serve seven years in the Department of Justice, meaning he is already subject to release, albeit on eight-year parole. Hernandez was banned from contacting any of his other siblings for life, unless they made contact first. Number 14, Jake Evans. Describing how he had been planning to kill for a while, sinister, cold and calculating Jake Evans told an operator how he had killed two members of his family. Evans, who said his younger sister and mother were suffocating him, used a .22 revolver to commit the crime, reloading at least once during the attack. Charged with capital murder and denied bail, he later pleaded guilty to the crime and received a sentence of 45. Five years. Evans had wrote a chilling four-page confession stating how a Halloween movie had inspired him and that he had planned to continue the spree but changed his mind. Number 13, Nehemiah Grigo. Said to have first attacked his mother with a .22 caliber rifle, 15-year-old Nehemiah Grigo then told his brother what he had done before attacking him with the same gun. After this, he proceeded to attack and kill two of his sisters, who were holed up in their bedroom before heading downstairs to wait for his father to return home. After returning home at 5am, Grigo's father was attacked with an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle with scope and died instantly. When he was later apprehended, Grigo told police that he had been having suicide suicidal and homicidal thoughts. Telling authorities he had intended to drive off and use the guns to kill more individuals, he had plans to ideally die in a gun battle with police. Originally lying to his girlfriend and church officials that his parents were killed in a car accident, he was tried as an adult and sentenced to three concurrent life sentences, with possibility for parole after 30 years. His most recent appeal to be freed has, of course, failed. Number 12, Joseph McVeigh. On January 2nd, 2011, at around 6 p.m., near Big Prairie in Holmes County, Ohio, an argument between a woman and her 10 year old son escalated into a deadly encounter. Minutes later, 46 year old Deborah McVeigh lay inside the home with a fatal gunshot wound and was found by police a short time later. Her youngest child, Joseph McVeigh, whom was only 10 years old at the time of the killing, would later confess to the murder of after his sister witnessed the killing. The argument with his mother, it turns out, was simply over movement of some firewood, an argument Joseph McVeigh decided was worth killing over. Six guns had been kept in the home, and police later revealed that Joseph was exposed to episodes of domestic abuse, but more so by his mother. He was deemed not competent to stand trial due to being mentally unfit, and it's unclear if he is still in the legal system or if he has been released. Number 11, James Fairway. Weather. Severely bullied for his prominent ears, James Fairweather struggled at school and had been badly affected by the death of his grandmother. His reign of terror began on the 29th of March 2014 when 33-year-old James Atfield was stabbed to death in Colchester, Essex, UK. Three months later, Naid Almina, a 31-year-old Saudi student at the University of Essex, was also stabbed and killed by Fairweather, who initially went uncaught. Apprehended while planning a third murder, murder in 2015, he pleaded responsible for both deaths and was just 14 years old at the time of the killing. Fairweather had been convicted of knife point robbery of cigars in 2014 and sentenced to a year's supervision, but was also convicted of criminal damage of a house in 2013. In April 2016, he was found guilty of both murders and sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 27 years. Number 10, Tienan Darnton. Darnton's step-grandmother Mary Gregory died for 
following a house fire at her home in Haysham in May 2018, and it was initially believed to be an accident. The truth, however, was revealed to be very different when Darnton, then 18, confessed to a counsellor and to college friends that he might have killed someone during a game of truth or dare. A discarded packet of Tunnock's tea cakes and a can of Coca-Cola later placed him at the scene, and it was revealed that he kept a terrifying kill list of potential victims. This list also included notes about stalking and attacking women, and Darnton had a dark fascination with serial killers. Darnton was handed a life sentence with a minimum term of 15 years at court. Number 9. Will Cornick In a story that shook Britain, 61-year-old teacher Anne Maguire was attacked while teaching a Spanish lesson at Corpus Christi Catholic College. Perpetrator Cornick had only five incidents of misbehaviour in four and a half years at the school and did not have a criminal record. A personality change in Cornick had been noted following a collapse on holiday in Cornwall and he was upset when he learned that he would not be able to join the army due to his diabetes. He was found to have planned the murder over several months, even texting a friend on Facebook to discuss his plans. Cornick had brought a bottle of whiskey to celebrate and admitted he planned to kill two other teachers that day. Only 15 at the time of the slaying, he was tried as a minor, later found guilty, but was still sentenced to a minimum of 20 years. Number 8. The Menendez Brothers Becoming national sensations when Court TV broadcast their trial in 1993, brothers Joseph and Eric Menendez attacked their parents with shotguns while they ate ice cream. Threatened with being cut off from the family's $14 million estate, the brothers took matters into their own hands, even reloading the guns to fire the fatal blows. A couple of months after the killings, wild spending sprees were reported to have taken place by the brothers, including luxury items, businesses and travel. The brothers were arrested in 19. After Eric confessed to his psychologist Jerome, who later told others, and they were held separate from each other without bail. A national sensation when Court TV broadcast the trial in 1993, the trial eventually saw them convicted on two counts of first degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. They were sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Number 7. Kim Edwards Already attending a school for difficult children, Edwards had become involved with fellow student Lucas Markham. More on him soon. Edwards was often missing with Markham and one incident saw them missing for six days while camping in a forest. Her mother banned her from even seeing Markham again, something that later proved to be a fatal decision. On the night of the murder, Edwards let Markham in through a bathroom window to carry out his attack. Both Kim's mother and Elizabeth Edwards and her younger sister Katie Edwards were killed, with both attackers later dubbed the Twilight Killers after watching the movie the night after. Sentenced to 20 years in prison, she is one of the youngest double murderers in the UK's history, being just 14. Number 6. Lucas Markham The second half of the duo dubbed the Twilight Killers, Lucas Markham struck up an intense and sometimes toxic relationship with fellow troubled student Kim Edwards. Together they planned the murders of the Edwards family, after they had been stopped from seeing each other for some time. Working on their sinister plan in the local McDonald's, Markham and Edwards were described as inseparable by those who knew them. The night of the attack, Markham carried a big bag of knives to Edwards' address and attacked both her mother and sister. He later pleaded guilty to manslaughter before changing this to murder, with Edwards found guilty and both were sentenced to 20 years in prison, later reduced to 17.5 years on appeal. Number 5. Amar Deep Sada Currently thought to be the world's youngest serial killer, Sada allegedly killed three people by the time he was just eight years old. Born in the village of Mushasha in Bihar, India, he was somewhat of a loner and had a very temperamental attitude towards his parents. Often throwing tantrums and being short-tempered, he committed his first murder at age seven, attacking his six-month-old brother while he was crying. A year passed before his parents gave birth to a second child, a girl, who would later become Sada's second victim, mainly from a fit of jealous rage. Still free and continuing to cause chaos in his local community, Sada later attacked and killed another eight-month-old infant from the Devi family. By this time, villagers had decided Sada was too dangerous to be left free, and he was taken to the local police. Sada was diagnosed with severe chemical imbalance in his brain and had developed a severe conduct disorder. Charged with murder and detained at a children's home until he turned 18, he is now reportedly free and could be roaming the streets of India. Number 4. Daniel Bartlam 
Convicted of murder on the 9th of February 2012, Daniel Bartlam killed his mother in a frenzied attack at their home in Nottingham in 2011. He initially told police that there had been an intruder in the home who had attacked her and set the home ablaze, later changing his story under police interview. His addiction to violent video games was seen as a major factor in the attack, and several stories had been written on his computer that were similar to the murder. Labelled the Coronation Street killer after some media outlets compared his crime to one on the show, his identity was released in an unusual move given his age of 14 at the time of the killing. Number 3. Michael Beaver Responsible for what became known as the Broken Arrow Killings, Robert Beaver and Michael Beaver killed five members of the Beaver family in Broken Arrow, United States. Michael Beaver, who was just 16 at the time of the killings, committed the murders alongside his 18-year-old brother, Robert Beaver. Behaviour of the two killers had been reported as unusual for some time, and neighbours often noticed that the children were not allowed to speak or interact with others. They had both planned the killings in great detail and were apprehended after a short search with canine units behind the home, and both were sentenced to life imprisonment, with Michael Beaver convicted as an adult, yet escaping the death penalty thanks mainly in part to his age at the time of the killings. Number 2. Graham Young Convicted of three non-fatal poisonings at the age of just 14 years old, Young was caught when a suspicious teacher reported his crimes to the authorities. He is one of the youngest people to have ever been detained at Broadmoor Secure Hospital, where he later admitted to killing his stepmother, although this has never been proven. He later became known as the Teacup Poisoner after he continued his crimes when released killing two colleagues and attempting to kill a further two. He died inside Parkhurst Prison, age 42, having suffered a heart attack, and the case made national news, with a debate about the release of mentally ill patients. Number 1. Mary Bell Considered to be one of the most depraved and dangerous murderers on the list, Bell was convicted of killing four-year-old Martin Brown after luring him to an abandoned house in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, England. Bell suffered a horrendous upbringing during her early years, with her mother involved heavily in prostitution and often attempted to kill Bell while making it look like an accident. She killed again after her first murder committed at 10 years old and was finally caught, with psychiatrists determining that she was suffering from deep psychopathy. She was sentenced to life in prison. Spent much of her time in Red Bank Secure Unit on Merseyside, but was released in 1980 after serving a 12-year sentence. She has lived in anonymity ever since, and while she was found by the media and moved in 1998, this has now been extended to her daughter, who is now believed to be 31. Her current whereabouts are unknown, and she remains protected by a High Court order issued in 2003. Bell has been featured in a number of true crime documentaries, including Deadly Women, commissioned by Investigation Discovery. Thanks for watching the top 50 most dangerous kids in the world. Remember to like, subscribe, and share the content as everything helps to grow the channel and bring the videos to a wider audience. Make sure you check out the next video on this page, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.